If you don't watch the White House press briefings with Jen Psaki, and we sympathize with you if you don't, you may have missed us. We played it before because it was really one of the amazing moments in American politics. Not enough people noticed it. Jen Psaki, from the podium in the White House briefing room the other day, called on Joe Rogan's boss, Spotify, to censor Joe Rogan. Here's what she said. This disclaimer, it's a positive step, but we want every platform to continue doing more to call out and mis and disinformation while also uplifting accurate information. But ultimately, uh, you know, our view is it's a, it's, a, it's a good step, it's a positive step, but there's more that can be done. So what the apologists have told us for the past four years, as we point out censorship after censorship after censorship, book burning, it's all totally fine because the government's not doing it. This has been National Review's position for five years. As long as it's not the government, then really, says David French, the First Amendment doesn't apply. But here you have the government, the president's own spokes chick, demanding censorship and then the company obeying. Spotify has removed 70 episodes of Joe Rogan's show. So this seems like a crime, actually. But what do we know? We're not lawyers. Glenn Greenwald is. He's also an independent journalist. He joins us tonight. Glenn, thanks so much for coming on. So they've been telling us all this time, like, it's no big deal. Settle down, Glenn Greenwald. This is not a violation of the First Amendment, whatever it is. This looks like a violation of the First Amendment. Right, and obviously that, that comment that you just referenced is in and of itself disturbing. Why should the White House be weighing in at all on who they think should be on Spotify, who they think should not be, what they think Spotify should and shouldn't be doing about their podcast hosts? But it's even more alarming when you consider that it's actually part of a broad pattern, even an explicit strategy by Democrats to use their majoritarian power in Washington to coerce companies to censor for them in ways the Constitution would prohibit. They've repeatedly subpoenaed social media companies and explicitly said, if you don't start censoring more, you will face legal and regulatory reprisals. Remember when Parler was taken off the Internet, when it was the number one most popular downloaded app? It was because AOC went online the day before and said, hey, Google and Apple and Wall Street and, 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 and Amazon, why are you allowing this app that I don't like on the Internet? And three days later, it was gone. So this is exactly the kind of coercion, Tucker, that the Supreme Court has said the First Amendment that the government can't engage in without violating the First Amendment. It's just so strange that lawmakers in the so-called opposition party sit back like there's nothing we can do. You know, these are private businesses. But as you just pointed out, th these are not private businesses acting independently. They're acting uh, in response to the threats of government, which regulates them. I think this is one of the key, most overlooked parts of the whole censorship debate is these Silicon Valley companies never set out to want to censor. Why would they? Why would you want to kick people off your platform? Right. You want more people on your platform. And ideologically, they came out of Silicon Valley, which is about the free Internet. So why are they now doing it? It's in part because they got pressured by journalists, the New York Times and NBC, saying if you don't censor, you have blood on your hands and you're responsible for the destruction of democracy. But a big reason is they know that Democrats will start enacting laws and enforcing regulation against them if they don't censor more. And they know that because Democrats are saying it explicitly over and over. And there's no one they like to censor more than you. Glenn Greenwald on Substack, to be clear. Great to see you tonight. Thank you.